Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Coast Life, your guide to all things Coastside. I'm your host, Daniel Romero. And I'm Angelica Troncoso. As summer is approaching and temperatures rise, people are getting vaccinated just in time to do activities they haven't been able to do in the past year and a half since the pandemic. Some of those include trips to the beach, surfing, and going out to your favorite restaurant, which have been getting more crowded. However, humans won't be the only ones hitting the beach. First, we will hit Lindemar Beach right here in Pacifica and see the annual dog surfing championship where dogs show off their gnarly surfing abilities. Then we head to Woodside, California and step into the beautiful Filoli Garden where the flowers have been growing for over a century. Grab your helmet, grab your bike, and hit the California Coastal Trail with the help of bike shops in San Mateo County. Fourth, we go soaring through the sky with airtime of San Francisco, taking fun to all new heights while enjoying the sunset. Lastly, we stand in unity with the AAPI community as they suffer injustice and violence throughout the nation. Let's go to the beach right here in Pacifica and see who's riding the waves. Hey everyone, this is Natalia with PCT and I'm coming to you with some info about the World Dog Surfing Championships. Yes, you heard that right, dogs on surfboards and there's a whole competition dedicated to the sport held right in Pacifica on the shores of Lindemar Beach. The concept for the sport originated in Northern California, and the first annual World Dog Surfing Championships were held in 2016. This is the best it. day of my life. So fun. Great. All of these uh, dogs are more talented than far us. None. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have many more skills. After having to cancel the in-person contest in 2020, they're back again this summer with the fifth annual World Dog Surfing Championships, happening July 31st on Lindemar Beach from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The event is free, no tickets are required, and it's completely open to the public. Top dog surfers, as well as amateurs, are welcome to compete in a variety of categories of dog surfing, such as tandem dog and tandem human dog surfing, and awards and prizes will be given to first, second, and third place in each category. Hi, I'm Michael from San Diego, and this is Abby, the two-time Guinness World Record surfing dog. There will also be a dog disc competition, a ball fetch competition, a pet wellness fair, a surf dog village, pet adoptions, and a beach dog fashion and costume contest. We competed some last year, and then we competed last weekend in uh, Imperial Beach, California, down south of San Diego. And my daughter bought us a lesson that was a fundraiser for a pit bull rescue group, and we took him down to the bay and pushed him around on flat water. and. Uh, I surf, so we'd take him to the beach with us, and then we pushed him around in really small waves, and he absolutely loves it. My dog is Beans. She's back there sleeping. She's very cold and tired. <laughs> she did a solo heat uh, in medium, and then she did a tandem, the dog-dog tandem with her little friend Carson. Oh my gosh, like what's not? To love about the whole day. Just every dog was happy and bouncing around and loved being out there. It was chilly but they all just kind of like everyone came in with smiles and, and so just spending time with my dog is the best thing ever. It doesn't matter what we do. Even if I fall down, you know, it doesn't matter. Time with her is the, probably the best time of the day. A portion of the proceeds go to dog, surfing, and environmental nonprofits. To register to compete in the contest, which as I said, is open to all levels of experience, or to sponsor a team or an entrant for charity, head over to www.surfdogchampionships.com. Okay, I have to admit, those dogs have more talent than me. They have ridden more waves than I have in my 22 years on this earth. Amen to that, girl. 
Those are some really talented dogs. I have a dog named Lily. She's like six years old. And for reals, I think she needs to take some lessons from these surfing dogs over here. But take I'm me with so you when you when you give her lessons, because I want to see that. Hey, Angie, quick trivia question. Who was the dog to win the first ever rural dog surfing championship in Northern California? Mm, was it a husky? No. A corgi? Mm -mm, nope. Uh, my brain. Um, an Australian terrier? You're cold. <laughs> a pug. Oh my gosh. Well, those were good guesses, but the very first winner was Abby Girl, an Australian Kelpie who rescued who was rescued through the Humane, Humane Society of Silicon Valley. But you're right about the pug. The runner up was Abby Girl's friend, Brandy the Pug. OG dog surfers of Pacifica. I hope I get to see them compete someday. I mean, with talent like that, they can they can audition for America's Dogs Got Talent. <laughs> hey, Danya, what's your favorite flower? Well, I don't know if it's a flower, but I really love cactuses. They just, <laughs> I, I go to Mexico all the time and like they just remind me of Mexico. So I just love cactuses. Okay, so even though they aren't cactuses. This <laughs> next place will be right up your alley. A grand luscious garden, an estate of 654 acres, and a house with a rich history. Let's head to Filoli Gardens in Woodside, California, where you can take a step into the past while enjoying the beauty of nature. So, uh, so Filoli Historic House and Garden was built from 1915 to 1917. That's when William Bowers born bought the land and then he built the house and uh, began working in the gardens and the structure. Um, so it's over a 100 year old estate and the gardens were really finished out in the 20s. Um, and then the houses only had two families, the Bourne family and the Roth family. They owned the house until the late uh, 60s when they decided what's next for us. Uh, Mr. Roth had passed away. Mrs. Roth was still working here. And so she made the decision to give the house and gardens to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. So it's been open to the public since 1975. And it was really Mrs. Roth who through the 30s into the 60s, through that 30s, plus year period really developed the gardens and and Thiloli is known today as a public garden when um, Black Lives Matter and important community conversations came out about diversity and inclusivity, we were able to really quickly align that with what was Mr. Bourne's historic motto, which, uh, which is the name of Philoli, fight for a just cause, love your fellow man, live a good life, and gave us a great platform to discuss all of the just causes that are happening right now and how Philoli can be a place for that community conversation and how we can also be a place to just demonstrate acceptance and demonstrate inclusivity. Um, we're not perfect. We have a lot to learn and a long way to go, but uh, we really are embracing this as an opportunity to make changes and to be a comfortable place and a safe place for everyone in our community. So the coronavirus, COVID-19, has been a challenge for all organizations. And Philoli, like the rest of the organizations in the Bay Area, did have to be closed for a period of time. Uh, we were closed from mid-March until mid-May. But fortunately for Filoli and for our community, we do have the beautiful gardens in the estate trail that we have been able to keep open since May. It's been, it's been really wonderful to have that as a resource, as a place uh, where people can come and keep social distance and wear your masks and feel comfortable um, with that. So we've tried to just turn all of our attention to being open and available and allowing people to come in in. We've, we've created one-way routes, we've, um, f we're following all of the regulations, we're requiring face masks and social distancing and, and all of those things. So we've really been able to adapt well um, to be a place that people can come. Uh, people are looking for places to do outdoor activities and, and connect with their family. Um, and now with uh, the virtual school, parents are looking for an opportunity to, to find ways to connect with nature or educate their children 
children and we're offering family field trips. So we have different things that we have offered, but mostly it's just about coming to Filoli and being in the moment. Wow, what a rich history Philoli Garden has. And becoming a public garden to the community is such a great way for the people to come and enjoy the serenity of Philoli. I have to agree with you there, Danya. The gardens look so beautiful and well-maintained. You can clearly see why Lurlane, uh, Lurlane Roth wanted to share Philoli Garden with the whole world. Mm -hmm. I think I might take a stroll over there when I have the chance. Hey, Angie, do you know how to ride a bike? Yes, I do. Um, I learned when I was a little kid, but I only really ever rode my bikes at the park. I never really took it like, you know, um, like everywhere else, like to other places or like to the pier. But it was a pink bike with glitter strands on both of my handles, two support wheels in the back and a killer bike belt. Okay, I see you. Okay, well, um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I learned how to ride a bike in like an hour when I was also like six, I think five or six. It was during my cousin's party. I stole her bike and I started riding it like around her neighborhood because I was like, I want to learn how to ride a bike. And I didn't have a bike at the time. So I stole hers and I learned how to ride a bike and I made my parents buy one later. <laughs> so yeah, that was my bike first bike experience. Yeah, well, these next locations are perfect for those like that like to grab their bike and take it on a spin and have an adventure, like what I did in my cousin's neighborhood. <laughs> From bike shops to trails, they have everything you need to take and your family on an amazing bike ride. During the pandemic, people have been brainstorming creative ways to enjoy the outdoors. This has led up to many people taking up activities such as mountain biking. Here in San Mateo, there are plenty of opportunities for people looking to take up mountain biking, especially since summer is around the corner. First, you will need to purchase a mountain bike of your own to get started. Yep, there are many local bike shops that are here to cater for everyone's mountain biking needs. One of those bike shops is Gearhead Bicycles. They sell mountain bikes at all price ranges. Another one in Pacifica is called Bikeworks HMB, which specializes in selling high-end mountain bikes. There is also Zach's Performance Bikes, which specializes in bike repairs. Once you have purchased your bike and have it tuned up, it's time to hit the trails. In case you already didn't know, San Mateo offers a variety of trails which vary in difficulty. The hills here cater to every kind of rider, whether you're a beginner or a veteran biker. So let us tell you the best places to go mountain biking here in San Mateo. First, we have Cattle Hill Outlook, which is mainly a downhill route. It's fast, rocky, and has a loose descent from Banqueno Trail near Highway 1. It also offers a great view of the Pacifica coastline. Next, we have Mori Point, which is an intermediate trail. The trail is easy to follow, so you don't have to worry about getting lost. You also get to enjoy the view of the Peninsula coastline as you coast down a beautiful descent. You can also see a few ponds and wetlands along the way. After that, we have Skeggs Point, which is a rocky trail that is meant for more advanced riders. It has sharp turns and an exciting downhill descent, so this is a must-do for every advanced rider. Then we have the Sweeney Metal Loop, which is short, with a steep descent along the way. The trail also has great scenery. We also have Water Dog Lake Park, which is a great single track trail. It's steep and also has twisty single tracks. It's a crazy descent, so I would not recommend this for beginners. 
As you can see, there are so many places to go mountain biking. The mountain biking community in San Mateo is always growing fast and always welcomes new riders. So check it out if you're in the area. Yep, we would also recommend downloading apps like Meetup to find local group rides near you. With that, we look forward to seeing you in the bike trails. This has been Pacific Coast Television, bringing you the inside scoop on the mountain biking scene in San Mateo County. Wow, these bike shops have so many things and they're located right here in the San Mateo area. To be honest, that looks super fun. Even though I like don't bike ride, I, it, it makes me want to go and get my bike, my little mini bike and like go bike ride over there. Yeah, but I'm gonna disc off everything on my bike and take it for a spin. Woo -woo. It's but been a minute. I I think I might go ahead and check them out. I mean, what a great way to go and exercise, take in the great outdoors, and it's really a great time to spend with your family throughout a pandemic. Right, okay, another trivia question, Angie, that I'm gonna hit you with. Do you know which is the longest bike trail in the world? There's a longest bike trail? Um, I'm not really sure, which one is it? Drum roll, please. It's the Great Divide mountain bike route with 2,700 miles in length. It's the longest trail in the world, and it was created back in 1997, which is like two years before it was born. A long ago. And it still holds the place as the longest stretch of continuous trails in the world, from Banff, Canada, all the way to Antelope Wells, New Mexico. Crazy. That is crazy. I mean, I was born in 1997, but like, that's sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, talk about putting pedal to the metal, am I right? Most definitely. Okay. Quick question, Danya. I know you've been doing all these trivia questions, now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. But are you afraid of something? Um bugs okay yeah, yeah bugs I, I can tell you mm -hmm. um well i would say well, actually for... actually bugs and i start sweating when i'm in like high alt altitude buildings like a little nervous about that girl same <laughs> but no. well this next segment will put you to the test as you hit the sky to beginner courses, to more advanced locations, um, paragliding is an outside activity that will most definitely have you appreciate Mother Earth. Hi, my name is Emily. And I'm Jake. Thank you for tuning into PCT. We are gonna go over what paragliding is and how you can participate in it. So a lot of you are probably thinking to yourselves, what is paragliding? Paragliding is a recreational competitive adventure sport where the pilot is harnessed into a fabric wing, much like regular parachutes, and glides around using the harness handles on the glider <laughs> to steer. Paragliders usually operate over the ocean and use a beach cliff as their runway to lift off into the sky. You do not need an actual federal license or even formal training to paraglide, but many flying organizations require you complete a short course on safety before flying with them. This is a great way for you to experience a new perspective on a lot of your favorite sites, and overall the experience is just highly recommendable for you and your friends. experience in paragliding or you want to learn how, there are a couple of locations where you can do this near Pacifica and the Greater Bay Area. The first location is called Muscle Rock Park in Daly City. It's best for solo paragliders and there's designated areas for liftoff and landing. This site has smooth winds and a beautiful view of San Francisco. The second site is called Big Sur and it's near Carmel, California. 
The flying conditions are most suitable for beginners as the wind isn't too strong and the flight path is relatively short and open. The last location is called Mission Ridge and it's in Fremont, California. It's suited for intermediate and advanced paragliders and flyers can expect beautiful views of the Mission Peak Regional Reserve. One of the most popular paragliding courses in the Bay Area is offered by Airtime of San Francisco, where they offer individual and partner training at all the locations mentioned today. Feel free to check out their website for more information. So some of these organizations that offer lessons might have changed their guidelines due to the pandemic. So be sure to check on that before scheduling an appointment. And with that, um, you know, just paragliding seems like a really fun co-side activity for the summer, especially after everyone is vaccinated and we can hang out with our friends again. Of course. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed learning about paragliding. Wow, Emma and Jake were super informational on how paragliding works and the businesses right here on the coast side that you could go and check out. Yeah, I think I've seen people paragliding around the beach while on Highway 1. It looks super fun being in the sky and the view must be amazing. So to all the people that have ever wanted to have like a superpower of flying, like they wanna be Superman or Wonder Woman, then paragliding will definitely make you believe. Mm -hmm. But now it's time to fly back down to earth and recognize the racial issues going on in our community. People of color are experiencing discrimination and violent attacks, more so since the start of the pandemic. That's right, Angie. Members of Pacifica came together in unity to stand with the AAPI community, which have been targeted heavily. This goes to show the love Pacifica has for its people. When it comes to community, Pacifica does not joke around. Yeah, dozens of people gathered in solidarity to show how they felt, as you will see in the next clip. Hi, I'm Danya Romero with Pacific Coast TV, here at the Stop Asian Hate March in Pacifica to bring you coverage. Personal incidents were shared where they and their families felt discriminated. I've been wondering how many more Asian people that look like my family and me need to be attacked and hurt and murdered to really have people rise up and stand up and say this cannot happen anymore. According to Global News, racist attacks have increased five times since the start of the pandemic. We are not the virus. Viral videos that were made to the public gave those who have been impacted personally the courage to speak up. And I'm here because I've been personally impacted by the hate that has been just rising. It's impacted my family, my friends, and the people I know. And I'm glad Pacifica is supporting human rights. This is, this is not about just Asian hate, but this is kind of a harbinger of things that might come. Dozens of Pacifica residents marched from the Pacifica Community Center to the end of the 2.5 mile Rockaway Trail. Some fuzzy supporters came along too. Mary Beer showed the reasoning why she organized this march. Um, just, just that people won't talk about it as much as they should and the students that I work with have been really triggered by all of this and they're having a hard time dealing with it and they're not sure if it's okay to voice that. Nice. Here, do you see us? We are crying out. Do you hear us? We are getting killed. Do you care? Erasure needs to end. Invisibility of Asian Americans needs to end. Silence needs to end. We are not your model minority. We are not perpetual foreigners. We are not second class citizens. We are not a monolith. We are resilient. We are contributors. 
we are diverse, we are warriors, we are Asians, and we are Americans. We belong here. The veil has been lifted to the underbelly of what really lies beneath the surface. I hope this is an awakening to spur us all into change, into specific changes, not just for Asian Americans, but all black indigenous people of color. It needs to change for the sake of my children, your children, and the generations after us. Today, I challenge you to look deep within your own hearts to see where you have prejudice, where you have bias, where you have divisions. Before we can move forward, we need to acknowledge that in ourselves. And tear down any preconceived notions that lies deep within. I believe we are gathered here to rise up for change. This is the moment and the first step to venturing into a brand new world, into solidarity with Asian Americans and where their voices will be heard. For ways you can help, visit stopaap.org. Thank you for joining us at the Stop Asian Hate March right here in Pacifica. I'm Daniel Romero with Pacific Coast TV. What a powerful, powerful process you covered, Danya. We need, to, we need to stand in solidarity with our Asian American brothers and sisters in this time of violence and hate going around in our nation. Exactly. If you or anybody you know have been a victim to, to an AAPI hate crime or an illegal assistance, please contact the Legal Aid Society of San Mateo County at 650-558-0915. Pacifica Social Justice is also there to help at pacificasocialjustice at gmail.com. So we hit the beach to check out our furry friend surfing. Then we walked through the historic estate of Philoli Gardens. We then explored how you can mountain bike with friends and family. We then gained the power to fly with paragliding by, by the coast side. And lastly, we covered our Stop Asian Hate March right here in Pacifica. For anybody interested in media literacy and TV slash film production, come join us at Pacific Coast Television. PCT serving the local coastside community because everyone from our nonprofits, artists, and business owners have a voice that needs to be heard. Exactly. Come check us out on channel 26 and 27. And also on our website at www.pacificcoast.tv. Thank you for joining us at Pacific Coast Television. My name is Dania Romero. My name is Angelica Troncoso. And thank you for joining us on yet another episode of Coast Life, your guide to all things Coastside. See you next time. Mm -hmm.